Trevor, powerful column, powerful words today. Why do you think that this fiasco proves that the cops are biased in this country? Well, I think you simply have to ask yourself, Dan, what would have happened if the uh, demonstration had been by anyone to the right of center, not just um, right wing or extremist, anyone other than those who the police now regard as part of the establishment and the people they should protect and whoever they happen to be attacking uh, can go hang, basically. Indeed, it's true, because we saw, and look, I, I'm, I'm not saying for a single second, by the way, that we should pay much attention to the likes of, of uh, uh, Piers Corbyn and uh, COVID deniers, but we saw how quickly the police can crack down on folk like that. He was issued with a £10,000 fine. Why have they not done the same to Extinction Rebellion when they break the law? Well, they've threatened to, haven't they? But they haven't done so. And uh, Piers Corbyn, uh, whatever you think of him, that's a hell of a lot of money for him to suddenly have to find uh, for saying something that just happened to um, be unwelcome to the great and the good. And uh, the police, I think, ever since Tony Blair was in uh, office and um, the uh, Commissioner Blair uh, was in, the, in control of the Metropolitan Police, I think the police have been basically a, a, a wing of the Labour Party and the left of centre political movement. And they have demonstrated this many, many times when they've um, picked on people who have views which divert from those of the great and the good, which is that basically they're on side with climate change, with um, uh, Black Lives Matter, with, uh, with all sorts of gender issues and so on and so on. You could name a dozen of them. And wherever you roam in the uh, administration areas of our lives, the city councils, metropolitan and local authorities, the Whitehall, the police, the universities, they are all run and manned by people who are almost certainly um, left of centre, many of them Labour voters, and some of them actually Labour appointees. Why has Priti Patel talked the talk on this. She has threatened to get tough on Extinction Rebellion for some months now, but the police haven't walked the walk because as you point out in your column today, Trevor, they were actually allowed to enforce this blockade on... As these uh, demonstrators assembled their bamboo pole uh, frameworks, climbed up to say 10 or 12 feet above ground and then of course couldn't be touched because they were at height and therefore at risk of falling down and perhaps hurting themselves a little bit. So they just stay there all night watching and monitoring it. And millions of copies of newspapers of all descriptions, including the Financial Times, which is no friend of the, uh, the, the right wing uh, or the extremists who are demonstrating, um, and no enemy, I beg your pardon, of them. Um, they are all uh, stopped at huge cost at a time when the press, as these demonstrators would have known, are extremely vulnerable simply because of COVID. Now, Trevor, you have worked at News UK for many years. And this company, via its titles, has actually had a nuanced and measured conversation about climate change with readers for years. I mean, I've, I've, I've gone through some of the articles today, Trevor, just to prove to the Extinction Rebellion just the screeds and screeds that both the Sun and the Times have been writing over many years to make it very clear that we do believe there is an issue with climate change. However, we don't believe in the hysterical lies that are repeated by the Extinction Rebellion uh, to seemingly scare people. So what's your argument when people say to you, you work for Murdoch, you don't believe in climate change? Um we we understand climate change arguments and we as you say rehearse them in the paper frequently this is really not that much to do with climate change to be absolutely honest this is an anti-capitalist anti-markets pro uh pro-marxist extreme left-wing communist dominated and infiltrated as the movement itself admits um a campaign which is political and nothing to do with climate change they want to bring down this government. They want to destroy any representatives of a, an opinion which differs from theirs, and ours does. 
uh, but not on climate change so much, but on all sorts of other things that they espouse. This is really a, um, a, a destructive force, which has been allowed to run rampant by the police and by the authorities, and is now untouchable, as indeed so many other protest movements, some of which you would sympathize with, for instance, Black Lives Matter. But when you delve a little bit more deeply into how they operate, how they're financed, how they organize themselves, you begin to find that they're not entirely what they appear at face value. How outrageous was Keir Starmer's silence on this issue for 36 hours over the weekend? Well, it spoke very, very loudly, actually, his silence about his true stance on press freedom. And I think that while Keir Starmer tries to portray himself as the friendly, sober voice of um, rational, uh, central ground labor. His real feelings, and always have been his true feelings, are fairly hard left. He wasn't that far distance from Jeremy Corbyn, except for the fact that it didn't win votes, and what he's trying to do now is win support back for the Labour Party at almost any price. But his true feelings really emerged over the weekend, when while other members of the shadow cabinet, and indeed very senior former Labour ministers came out quite bravely and forcefully in print and on radio and television to denounce this anti-press censoring method of destroying the newspaper industry, if they could possibly get away with it. By contrast, you heard nothing whatsoever from Keir Starmer, whose track record on the press uh, is absolutely appalling. Indeed. Wise words from Trevor Kavanagh, the political columnist at The Sun. You can read his column in today's newspaper. Here it is. XR fiasco proves our cops are biased. Trevor Kavanagh, thank you so much.